So you're thinking about buying presets. You might be thinking that a preset is a one-click wonder. Uh, you upload your photo to Lightroom, you click on the button, and your photo is ready to go. I've got a surprise for you. It doesn't quite work like that, but it's almost as good. You just need to make a couple of adjustments. My name is Kubis Tolich. I'm a photographer from Cape Town, South Africa, and welcome to my YouTube channel. If it's your first time, great to have you, and I hope you stick around for a long time. If you've been here before, it's great to have you back. Please, please, please click on the subscribe button so that this channel can grow and I can make more content for you guys. Click on the like button, comment down below, tell me what you thought of the video, tell me if you've got any questions. I'm more than willing to answer any questions that you ask um, concerning this video. So for today's video, I've made a screen recording for you guys to show you how I go about using presets. Um, doesn't matter where you buy the presets, there's certain things that you need to look at to change to make the preset work for you. But before we get there, I am super excited to at last announce that I've created my own preset pack for you guys. It's called the Kubis Tolich Preset Pack 2020. And um, there's 13 presets plus three black and white presets and six or seven tools, um, a one-click grain adder, a one-click sharpener, one-click noise reduction um, to make your workflow faster um, and consistent. So I'm gonna link uh, my preset pack below. Go check it out in the store. There's more details there and um, I hope you enjoy the presets. So let's get down to the screen recording and I'll tell you guys more about presets. So I think a screen recording will show you best how I go about using presets. I'm not gonna do cloning and all kinds of stuff now in this video. Um, you can look at some of my previous videos to check that out. Um, this would be more just how I go about using the presets and what I find is important. And I think starting off with that, um, the very big thing with presets I think is obviously exposure, but also then white balance. Um, I think let's quickly apply a preset to this photo. I'm gonna make the white balance slightly off and like just play with it like that. So I know the white balance is wrong now, it's like completely green and too cold. And then if I now add my preset to it, you can see it really doesn't look good. But as soon as I adjust the white balance and then the exposure, look at that. So white balance and exposure is definitely one of the key things with regards to any presets, whether it's my presets or anybody else's presets that you have. White balance and exposure is the thing. Now with that said, that doesn't always fix it. You might run into other problems with regards to, to that, um, whether it's a contrast problem, maybe the photo looks too contrasty or it looks too flat and so forth. So before we go down with presets and I edit a couple of photos for you guys to just show you around, I'm gonna reset this photo and let's up the exposure just for the sake of it. And then um, if you look at the white balance, you can play with white balance that we've already covered. But then the other thing these presets a lot of times has is curves. And the curves, you've got your red, green, and blue, your RGB um, curve turns that you can, or tone curves that you can adjust. And if you go on, for example, red, let me show you, for example, this one in red, you can, adjust the red there and your tone curve doesn't have to look like this but when you're battling with a preset maybe it's got too much red in the shadows or greens or whatever and you want to slightly adjust that because it's not quite to your taste go and have a look at what the um, tone curves does so um Let's do a quick turn curve, for example, we go down there, or we adjust the blue as well, maybe just the middle curve there, adjust the greens, and do the blues here. So there's something that's happening over there. Um, you can even overdo it on the turn curves and then add some magenta in the white balance and suddenly the color comes back again 
and you have something interesting with regards to colors. Maybe her skin turns up yes to orange and then you can play with the orange on the HSL slider or then the saturation. You can play with that. Um, let's open up the shadows and see what happens. So immediately you've got some kind of thing that you can work with. I'm gonna reset it again. And if we go all the way down here, we've got something that they call the calibration or camera calibration. Um, mine's currently on version five. But if you start playing with this now, obviously you can play with shadows and highlights. Um, I'm not gonna touch that at the moment, but I'm gonna play with the red primary, green primary and blue primary for you guys, because that is a lot of times where presets are also built into. And if you again want to remove reds or magentas and greens or whatever the case, um, this is a place to play with in presets. Um, so let's have a look here. If I, for example, add red then you can saturate this both ways. We add a bit of green there. I just want to up the exposure again so you guys can see even better. Let's say over there. And we add a UN saturation slider like that and then add both of that or just go the other way you can see things are starting to happen i think let's use a different photo that will maybe ex show that better let's go to this one um this is a raw image um, nothing has been done to it so if i add the red yeah add some greens add some blues or take away blues Maybe that's a great tip for you guys. Look at that orange and teal look. If you wanted to know how people get a orange and teal look, it's mostly down here. Um, you can play with the shadows here. You can see how the bushes in the background, the color changes. Look at that. So with that in mind, let's go up. Um, we want to get a bit of the, so we've got a, like an orange and tealy move because we've played with those colors. And I really encourage you guys to play with the raw image and play with those um, calibrations, camera calibration colors, and then um, see what you can come up with. Now, I haven't done anything to this image apart from this. So let's go all the way to the top and we add some warmth there. So suddenly the bluish, tint in her dress and his shirt is starting to go away but um, now adding the white balance the skin tones are getting too orangey for my like so what I'm gonna do here is take the orange slider and bring it down again I might actually remove a bit of magenta there we go and then to get rid of more of the blue you can do it two ways you can just take the blue slider and pull it down and you can see it makes quite a good effect or you can take the little pointer there put it on the shirt and drag it down and it will actually work on the exact color i think when it comes to a bride with blue eyes be careful to remove the blues too much because yes you will lose it in the dress but those eyes will become gray instead of being nice and blue. The other way of doing it is you can remove it quite a bit, but then use a brush to bring back the blues in the eyes. Um, so now we can just add some blacks, maybe open up the shadows a bit and go for a bit of contrast. Um, hide those highlights over there, open up the shadows a bit more make it slightly cooler, slightly less magenta, and there we have it. Um, so I think the main thing, guys, that you need to know is, let's have a look at one other image of this couple, um, is that you need to play, number one, with your white balance, then play also with the contra, ach, the exposure, tone curves, your HSL sliders, and right at the bottom, you can also then play with um, your, uh, what you might call it, calibrations. Now, I also want to add that there's something like split toning, and I just want to touch on split toning because this is also, um, some people use this quite a lot within their uh, presets. Uh, if you go to, let's say, orange, and if you hold the Alt or Option key on Mac, 
and you slide this, you can see what colors does get affected. So if I hold it there and I let go, now I know which color I have. Now I can decide on how much I want to add. So I can just add subtle color there. Let's go to the shadows and see what the shadows will look like by changing these colors. You can see there's quite a magenta. Let's add a magenta for the, for the sake of this and add quite a bit of it. There you can see it. Now to manipulate it backwards, you can now change your white balance and bring back some greens, take away magenta and then add some warmth to drop the exposure. Now you can see the color is quite off. So let's go all the way to the bottom. We've got magenta. Let's play with the greens a bit. Add some blues there. There we go. Now suddenly the color is becoming almost normal again, as you can see. But it's got like pretty cool look to it. And that's the thing, guys, is you can play on the one side and manipulate it back on the other side and get the desired look. So be careful of like really... How can I put it? Just thinking that you're going to buy a preset and it's a one click wonder. It's very important that you play with these things and you'll get used to what works. I mean, you're going to buy maybe someone's presets and once you, you bought the presets, you're going to have to change quite a bit with regards to all these sliders. But once you've done it maybe one or two times, um, you are definitely going to get the hang of it and it's going to be much faster. Maybe in the beginning, you're going to take quite long to um, edit a photo, but um, it's going to be easier for you as you go along. Okay, guys, let's play with the preset here. You will see um, basically what, this, what the settings look like and that's perfectly fine by me. This is quite an old preset of mine. Um, I've added the preset, just up the exposure, up the white balance a bit and suddenly the photo comes alive because of it. Let's crop it from this side a bit just to, to bring it in nice and close. You can open up the shadows. Some of you might add contrast because you like a contrasty photo. Some of you might um, take less contrast. Um, some of you might add saturation. Some of you might take less saturation. And that's the whole thing about playing with um, sliders. So yeah, we've got the curves. You can open it up in the mid section. Yeah, let's go to the red, green, and blue. Yeah, you can decide what kind of sliders you want. I quite like it the way it is, um, and so on and so on. So if I go to the calibration at the bottom, you'll see this specific preset has nothing um, done to it, but we can maybe add some if we want to add a bit of green, but then, uh, go for the green slider on that side and then go the opposite side maybe with that and go for a, like a, let's call it an autumn-y look and we can drop it by doing that and playing with the tones on that you can see it drops quite a bit um so guys please please make sure that you understand that presets is not a one-click wonder you have to adjust things to make it look the way you want it to, to and um, once you have adjusted a preset, you can just save it because sometimes it will be closer to what you would like. So if you, for example, take my KT preset, um, let's say you buy my presets, you click on the KT um, and you adjust some of these things and you like the end result, go to the top, create a preset and save it as KT1 by... Susan, uh, if your name is Susan, uh, call it whatever you like and save it so that next time you um, edit an image that looks pretty much the same, that you don't have to go play with it from scratch again, but you've already created a new preset for yourself. Um, so my preset might just be a base or someone else's preset might just be a base. And there's a lot of presets. I can show you one more of my presets. But, um, it's more developed for sunset type of photos. Um, let's up the exposure before I do add it. Uh, there we go. So there's a preset of mine that's more for sunset. You can see there's some ugly magenta -y type of tones there, which is not necessarily the best for this specific photo. But if I take, for example, this photo and I add that same preset 
and we warm it up a bit and add some contrast. Look at that, suddenly it pops nicely. And that's the before and after, before and after. Um, and I did maybe two adjustments to it. If we go to a picture like this, we can run down my preset here and, and see which one is gonna work for it. And, um, and again, let's say maybe KT7 Sunset, we take that one, we take a bit away the magenta, we add some warmth and see what that looks like. That's a golden type of look. That doesn't work for you. You can always go for the next one. It really depends on what works for you with regards to the presets. I'm actually th think I'm just gonna go with KT1, which is my favorite preset. Um, it's the one I use quite a bit um, these days. And you can see how the warmth really jumps up and we can maybe add a, a filter over there, um, clarity. And suddenly this photo starts to to pop quite nicely. Let's look at that before and after. So play around guys, it's really um, enjoyable. I've even got a preset in here that's like a very art, I even call it artist KT13 art. It's got quite a lot of um, grain in it. But the nice thing is I also have a preset that says zero grain, so that will take it out. It will add 20 grain, 40 grain and 50 grain. Um, depending on what you like. Again, you'll have to play with this, open up the shadows or you like it contrasty. Um, that really depends on you. Um, one that works nicely with grains, uh, with greens, uh, you can play with a normal KT4, KT5, or just go for my favorite, which is KT1. Let's go for KT4 on this one. We're just gonna add some warmth up the exposure a bit and there you have it. And yes, you might say his suit looks green. It's because it was green, it wasn't a blue suit. It was a green a green tint type of suit, very smart. Um, I can see quite a bit of noise there. I even got a nice little um, less noise button. If I click on it, gone is the noise. If I wanna add grain, we can add grain to it, which I'm not gonna do for this image. Guys, like I said before, if you've got any questions with regard to the presets and how I go about working with it um, after watching this uh, screen recording, please comment down below. Tell me if you have any questions. If you don't wanna ask it in the comments, maybe just leave a comment because it will help the channel. But also feel free to DM me on Instagram. My Instagram link is at the bottom. You're welcome to DM me on Instagram and ask me questions with regards to um, presets. You can even ask me questions with regards to um, my presets if you're thinking of buying it. Um, and if you like it, please click on the subscribe button, click on the like button, and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.